the Cluster Heart version 2 has been out for a while now, so I thought I'd explain the features and differences to version 1.3. For those who don't know what the Cluster Hat is, it's basically a hat for the Raspberry Pi B Plus 2 or 3 with a USB hub and four micro USB connectors normally used for Raspberry Pi Zeros. The Raspbian based images on the clusterhat.com site configure the Pi Zeros with USB gadget serial and Ethernet bridge to the controller's physical Ethernet port. This then allows you to connect over the network to the Pi Zeros and use them as a small cluster or standalone. The hat also allows power to the Pi Zeros to be turned on or off individually. So starting with version 2, it now uses an I2C IO expander you can see at the top right hand side of the board. This is used to control the alert LED and controls the power for each Pi Zero, which was previously controlled directly from the GPI opens. Using the I.O. expander you can now reboot the controller Pi without interrupting power to the Pi Zeros. Obviously this will interrupt network access to the Pi Zeros whilst the controller is rebooting, but this automatically recovers. The I.O. expander is also now used to enable or disable the P1 to P4 and power LED. This doesn't affect power to the Pi Zeros or the alert LED, which can still be turned on or off when required. The remaining two ports on the I.O. expander are used to control the right protect on the EEPROM and power for the USB hub. There are now three solder jumpers on the PCB. On the top side there's a PWR jumper which selects a source of power for the Pi Zeros. By default this is joined between RPI and the centre pad to source power from the controller GPIO pins. This can be cut and power is then sourced from the six way connector on the underside of the board. If it's cut and the centre pad bridged with solder to the side labelled USB, power is then taken via the USB cable. If you do this, you will need to replace the supply cable with one using thicker cables and ensure that it can supply more than 600 milliamp required for the hub and the Pi Zeros. If the jumper has been cut, normal power source can obviously be returned by bridging just the centre pad to RPI with solder. On the underside of the board, there is now a right protect for the EEPROM, labelled WP. When bridged with solder, it prevents changes being made to the EEPROM. This overrides the setting from the I.O. expander for those who want to ensure the contents can't easily be changed. And also on the underside is the power on state jumper labelled POS. By default this is linked which means the Pi Zeros are normally off. If the jumper is cut the Pi Zeros will turn on as soon as power is applied to the hat. Again if cut this can be bridged with solder to go back to being normally off. As with the previous versions, there's a serial console connector which can be used with a SparkFone FTDI Basic 3.3V, SparkFone BQ3 or the 8086 USB serial adapter. A red LED for 5V power at the top right which is useful if you're not using the controller's GPIO as a source of power. And then yellow or amber power indicators for the Pi Zero's P1 to P4. As I said earlier, the power to these LEDs can be disabled. There is also a blue LED which can be used as an alert indicator. The Raspbian based images for download on our site come set up with a cluster hat tool which allows you to control the power for the Pi Zeros and all of the other options on the IO expander. If you have any questions or need support, head over to the forum or if you want to buy a cluster hat version 2, they're available from our resellers and eBay store. All of these can be found on the clusterhat.com site. Cheers!